I'm back again with another video and I get this question all the time because it's one of those things where it's sometimes hard to find information on it and that is how did I get into club building and it's it can be a really long-winded answer and it really starts with the fact that as a kid I took everything apart have it be lawnmowers toaster ovens old electric drills it didn't really matter uh, I always want to take them apart, and as I got into different hobbies, I still just wanted to take things apart and work with my hands, and that meant taking apart skateboards and bikes and all kinds of stuff. And then one day, I got into golf, and then I was given a golf magazine and learning about how you can actually change shafts and golf clubs and grind wedges to make them sit different or how grip sizes would affect how a club would feel. And from there, all I did was go out, buy and find out places to source golf equipment or pieces or components of golf equipment, have it be club heads or shafts or grips or all those different parts of the golf club, ferrules, tip weights, anything like that. And then just experimenting. And the one thing that I encourage people who are getting into it is to start with some fairly inexpensive or some older components out of maybe buy an older set of golf clubs or something like that because you are going to probably ruin a lot of golf clubs. I ruined <laughs> more than my fair share of golf clubs, having it mean uh, getting grips stuck on halfway or not mixing epoxy correctly or trying to turn down ferrules and just creating massive flat spots on them. It's all comes, it all comes down to practice. It all comes down to learning every kind of intricate detail and then just never stopping learning. Now, one of the cool things is uh, at the time when I was still uh, kind of learning and getting into uh, truly professional club building and club fitting was that Golfsmith was still around or not uh, an entity any longer, but they had club building schools. So I ended up doing a two-day club building school and then I ended up being able to go down to their headquarters in Austin, Texas and doing a full week in-depth just everything you possibly want to learn about building golf clubs. It was a great experience. I met a lot of people that I'm still friends with. And then I went back again for their advanced program, which was another two weeks of just club building, club fitting every single day, learning about every aspect in and out of uh, wedge grinding, iron grinding, how different profiles are going to fit different players. Now, some of the things I learned because this was right around the time that launch monitors were really coming into their own and at the time it was just photo, like a vector launch monitor that was considered big at the time, came into play. So a lot has advanced since then and I still continue to learn. It, it's one of those things where you're never, ever, ever gonna stop learning because technology is always changing and you wanna be up to date all the time because if someone wants to ask you a question, you wanna be able to do your best to help that player and also help yourself as someone who's going to learn. Now, one of the other aspects of that is also having access to golf equipment. And what I said earlier about going in and finding used golf clubs or older golf clubs to work on, because first of all, you're going to ruin stuff when you start, like I said, I ruined a lot of golf clubs and you'd rather not ruin a customer's or your friend's golf clubs trying to do something you aren't aware of. And the other thing that I always tell people, I got a, a lie loft machine right here is go out, find a golf club and bend it until it breaks. You need to know what it feels like just before a golf club is going to break and you need to have the confidence to understand how you got to bend it, kind of the direction you're going to bend it to make sure you're getting the lie and loft correct and keeping one consistent or uh, one way or the other if you're trying to just bend loft or just bend lie uh, because it comes down to knowing how to measure properly and then also how to apply force, have it be a cast or a forged golf club and you're going to get practice the more you do it. It's, it's a skill that never stops. So if it means a new piece of golf equipment comes out and tip adapters and another thing that kind of came into the industry as I was still learning and being able to understand how different adapters react as far as maybe applying heat or using different ferrules or inside diameters, outside diameters and picking ferrules or picking shafts that work inside of those. It comes down to hands-on experience. So if you are really interested in it, and I've done this with people who have reached out is to take them into a shop and kind of run them through building a, a set of golf clubs or a specific golf club, have it be a driver or a three wood or something that they're interested in, in working on because the hands-on experience is going to make you a better club builder because 
again, it just comes down to putting, just like Tiger Woods says, putting in those reps to get better every single time. And when you do that, you're going to be good at it when you apply yourself and just never stop learning. It's one of my mottos is making sure that you're always applying yourself, always trying to get better because if it means helping yourself or helping someone else play better golf, then it's all worth it in the end. It's a great question. Thanks so much for asking it. If you have more questions, please use the comment section or subscribe down here, here on the bottom of the video. And thanks so much for watching.